Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to this Friday episode of our Pack Politics Podcast. Guys, it is the first official podcast episode for us in October. Welcome to the new month, right? So, guys, whoa, 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 whoa. October is starting off... Like, I I don't even have any words to describe it, right? Um, We... If you did not hear last night, um, well, early this morning, rather, there was breaking news about President Trump, as well as the First Lady, um, having COVID-19. They tested positive. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's like, whoa, like, right? The fact that our president has COVID-19. I mean, at the end of the day, he is an American and Americans have been getting COVID-19 for months. Um, So quite frankly, it shouldn't come as a surprise, but it is a surprise for many, myself included, nonetheless. But so while that is very, very important news, and we'll talk briefly about the implications um, that we're even seeing at this point of the president and the first lady having COVID-19, I also want to talk about the fact that there are more layoffs coming. The month is just getting started. And again, we're starting this month off already Um, basically in the negative, like severely in the negative with the amount of layoffs that are coming. So with more layoffs coming and with the president revealing early this morning that he indeed is positive, he indeed has COVID-19, let's let's talk about the current uh, implications of that. Like what are we already seeing as a result of him announcing those positive tests? I can guarantee you this will not be a long podcast episode today, um, even though you would think with the news to cover that it, it very much would be a long episode, but it won't. I can get through this relatively quickly for you. Um, but that said, sit back. You're listening to our PAC Politics podcast. The podcast is brought to you by our our organization, our United Resource Pack. We are a political organization. In case you don't know, we're not just some normal news show. We we do come with you uh, or come to you with the slant uh, of politics. We're not trying to remain neutral like everybody else because, in I mean, sometimes one party is wrong, one party is wrong. But anyway, not going to get on a tangent. Let's get this show started. I'm Brittany McDowell. Here we go. So more layoffs are coming. Uh, we were warned about the the layoffs by several companies. We were warned that if we did not see a stimulus package passed, we were warned that companies would start to lay off. And, and this is due to an inability of uh, congressional leaders um, I'm going to, quite frankly, put this more on congressional leaders more than I will the White House. I, I mentioned in the previous episode that, um, and, and I'm not just saying this out of sympathy for the president, given the fact that he now has COVID-19. If you, again, look back at uh, Wednesday's episode, um, I, I mentioned that the president, quite frankly, when it comes to all of the Republicans, he really is the only Republican at this point who is actually looking to get a deal for the American people. Now, you might kind of disagree with some of the tactics been used. You might disagree with some of his representatives, maybe Mark Meadows, who knows. But at the very least, you do have to look at his actions and what he has been willing to do and compare that with other Republicans and what they've been unwilling to do. And if you're honest, you do have to admit that any action really that we have seen from any Republicans um, that have actually benefited American people has come from the president of the United States. So again, I'm not going to lay blame here on the president when I consider the inability of a package to be passed. I'm going to, to, to place that blame on congressional leaders. And so the fact that they have not come up with a stimulus package, um, again, has been the fuel for some companies uh, to say, hey, look, you know, we don't have anything passed. So as a result of that, we have no more money to operate and we're going to have to like 
take the scissors and cut some losses here. So this week um, we have, for instance, Walt Disney. They've announced that um, they're going to be cutting around 28,000 jobs in both the state of Florida and California. Um, and it's 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 pretty kind of weird when you look at the two. When you look at California, California has a lot of restrictions still that aren't necessarily in place in Florida. So a bulk of those um, cuts are going to come from California, but they are still going to have to come uh, and do some cutting in Florida as well. Um, I, I'm not quite... Um, with Florida, well, here's the thing. With Florida, while there aren't really the restrictions, quite frankly, Americans aren't willing to really risk their lives and come out and be happy in, in Disneyland while there's still a pandemic going on. And and I just want to note that because I want politicians to, to consider that for the politicians out there who are operating under this guise of just, you know, open everything and and just by opening it, people are going to come. You're kind of operating uh, in the same sense as some startups where they figure, well, if I just open a business, if I just put up a website, if I just do business is going to come. And if you ask anybody who's ever had a business, they will tell you that is not how it works, right? They're one of the, the important components that you have to have when you have that new business is you have to have a certain level of trust. Consumers have to trust you. Um, and, and you have to be able to build that either before they come into your store, or you have to be able to build it, you know, immediately when there's that initial contact, when they come in. But in this case, as it relates to the opening of the economy, the opening and just saying, hey, everything's open. All doors are open. Come on in, guys. You have to realize that we don't live in a dictatorship, right? Americans have choice. I mentioned several, several, several episodes ago about how one of the things that is actually trying to be taken away from Americans at this point is choice, right? Um, but and, and that was kind of said under the context of, you know, when you get stimulus as an American, you make the choice of how to spend it, yada, yada, yada. So it's not exactly the same deal. But again, the theme here is choice. Regardless of, you know, if, 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 a, if a governor goes around and opens every door in his state, leaves it wide open and yells, come on in, folks, great Americans open again. And, you know, we're, we're open to the people for the people and by the people. That does not mean that the people are going to come and waddle their way through the doors. People are scared. Most people Know that this is, most people know that COVID-19 is more than just the cold, a cold or the flu. Most Americans understand that, hey, people are dying out here. Most people understand that, yo, people are really getting on ventilators. And yeah, some people are making it off. I personally know a few people who've made it off of ventilators. I know, I kid you not, let me tell you something. I know 17 people who have had COVID-19. 17 people. Luckily, by the grace of God, as I see it, all of them are alive. But you can't tell me that COVID-19 has no negative implications and that we can just go out here and live lives as normal. Now, am I saying that some people, you know, in some states we have to have the same restrictions, you know, or in, in some states, you know, uh, it's it's all as bad as other. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that you are absolutely kidding yourself if you think otherwise. But bringing that back to the topic at hand. What we see, what Walt Disney has seen, I think needs to be a case study for politicians. Um, because especially when we when we have this talk about, and, and I've said it several times, the PPP was one of the, the least effective forms of stimulus. I'm not going to dive into that again. But when you, for instance, just throw money at these companies, as was done with Walt Disney, um, and you allow them to just have a free-for-all, you, you bail them out, you give them corporate welfare, um, sure, they get money to sustain themselves for a while, as we just saw, but when the money is gone, unless there are consumers there to utilize their products, their services, the money's going to dry up. That's what we have seen. So I think especially politicians that support kind of a larger stimulus package, um, 
I might go so far as to say, look, you might even be able to like come down on your numbers by taking out the PPP. But if you have to support the, the PPP, if you realize that that's the only way you're going to be able to get the other side to go along with anything you want, um, maybe that's the program in which you need to make your cuts. Like, but, but anywho, 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 again, I think that Florida and California need to be a case study because you have one state that is, you know, has severe restrictions and we're hearing everywhere that the problem with the economy is that, that, that states are closed. Why are we not hearing anywhere that in places where, there, where everything is open, things still haven't rebounded to the same effect or the same extent that people would have thought that the rebound would have happened? We're not hearing about that, right? Because it doesn't suit their narrative. We're not hearing about that because then when you do hear about that, then it completely destroys their argument that everything needs to be open. Let, let's make the case for them. Let's make the case for that governor out there in Florida. Let's say you open everything. Everything is open. No mask. Oh, wait, it's kind of close to reality, right? But let's say, for instance, that everything is open and we're just living as normal. When things still don't rebound, then what are you, what are you going to blame it on then? Are you, are you going to say that the, the, that Democrats from another state like came in and they like are scaring? Like, what are you going to blame it on? What? Admit the fact that people have a choice and the choice that people are making is that they are scared for their lives. They are scared, scared for their elderly parents. They are scared for their children and they don't want them to die. But anywho, moving on for that. So that's what we see going on with Walt Disney. We heard, obviously, everyone's been talking about the airlines in recent weeks, and uh, namely United and American Airlines. Um, they have plans to essentially furlough 32,000 employees. And one of the things that <clears throat> I've been seeing online is... Um, now, you can say what you want. You can say, you know, obviously a lot of uh, there's this kind of domino effect with the the airline industry. Oh, you know, if you don't fund airlines, people can't travel and things kind of come to a halt. Things are to a halt anyways. I finally heard, I don't recall who it was, a politician yesterday. Again, my memory is horrible. I really need to start writing stuff down. But I finally heard for the first time a politician openly say that, yes, helping the airlines is important, the airline industry. But at the same time, they are not the only industry that is suffering Yes, it's important to help restaurants, but they are not the only industry that is suffering. Now, that's not to minimize the fact that they are suffering, but it's to acknowledge the fact that other people in other industries are suffering. And so when we are running around here saying, you know, oh, but the airline industry, but this industry, but this industry. Okay, every tell that to the other people who were having to go file unemployment if they are able to, because some states, you know, at this point have kind of stopped accepting new unemployment applications. Tell that to the people who are having to go and file unemployment applications, having to go and get food stamps or having to tell their children that they can't do this, can't like go and tell that to those people who were in other industries that well, we only care about certain industries. Now, maybe obviously what you have to do is allocate more resources to certain industries than others, but we cannot live in a society where we only favor assisting certain people, especially when in Florida, say, for example, you realize that given consumer choice, when you look at the fact that people have choices, again, when you look at the fact that people have choices, they may not always choose to support the industries or the businesses that politicians want to prop up. What happened to free market economy? It's, it, you know, it boggles my mind. We want to yell free market economy, free market this, free market that in certain instances when it relates to certain things. But in other areas, in other instances, free market economy, psh, economy, shmonomy, right? So that's going on with United. And then here's, here's one that was relatively kind of new to me, Allstate. You know, the insurance company, they are trimming 
about 8%, well, actually 7.5% of their workforce, which comes out to slightly under 4,000 jobs. Again, layoffs are coming. In some cases, layoffs are already here. They've been here for months. Now, yeah, certain, certain, um, certain companies are just coming around to the party. They're late joining the party, but they're joining the party that has been going on for some Americans for months. Some businesses have been closed for months, but these people are lucky enough to have just been joining the party. I, um, oh, here I go again, not remembering who it was, but I read an article, I believe it was yesterday or maybe the day before of, uh, the CEO of, um, of a company. Gosh, again, I apologize. I, again, I need to start really writing stuff down. <laughs> I was reading an article where, apologies for that, a, a CEO, um, a, a billionaire CEO, nonetheless, um, of a tech company, he flat out said as well, like, do not give another dime to these larger companies. Um, again, the, the Republicans, specifically the Senate Republicans, like to use the word targeted when they talk about future stimulus. This billionaire CEO mentioned the fact that the next stimulus package needs to be targeted to small businesses and individual Americans. This is how you create demand in the economy. We have already seen the data that suggests that the people who really were not in a position where they needed stimulus, what did they do with that money? They saved it. Did that stimulate the economy? No. The companies, the large companies you gave money to that were able to stave off uh, closure for a few months, given the loans that they received, the PPP loans, were they able to stave off uh, closing for a few months? Sure. But as soon as that money was gone, when they had no customers, what did they have to do? Close. Did that make it really effective just for a few months? So if the goal was to just buy a few months worth of time, then yes, you accomplished what you were supposed to accomplish. But if the goal was to actually help the economy uh, in, 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 in a, in a in a more comprehensive fashion, uh, more than just kind of the short sighted kind of uh, help, you did not accomplish your goal. And we, we finally had someone and I was like, whoa, like this dude is telling the truth. Amen, brother man. So at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> personally, I was, I was, I was off yesterday and, um, my team knew I was off. So I wasn't like really interacting with anybody, um, cause I was doing some travel yesterday and I was even though I was off, I was paying attention to what was going on. And if you paid attention yesterday, Americans kind of got dragged through the mud regarding stimulus talks. We heard uh, that, oh, uh, well, there, you know, here's, you know, Nancy Pelosi's skinny new bill. And, you know, we're going to talk to Steve. We're going to, we're going to stop, uh, talk to Mnuchin about this and feeling very hopeful after that talk. Oh, well, you know, we're expecting Mnuchin to come back with something. He's going to come back with the counter offer. Steve Mnuchin came back with the counter offer of $1.62 trillion. That counter offer was a no-go for the Democrats. Then it was like, okay, well, then the House is going to go ahead and vote on the $2.2 trillion bill. Then it was like, oh, wait, no, we're going to allow a little bit more time. And then we're going to talk a little bit more. And then we're going to be able to come back with something. And then they have the conversation. And then what happened after that conversation? We're out of luck. You're, you're SOL. Like, nothing's going to happen. We were dragged through the mud yesterday. Like, wild hogs, dirty pigs, dragged, kicking, screaming, oinking. And it was no fun. It was no fun to see because you were dealing with real people's lives. I know that they only think the, the real people's lives that they are affecting are these people uh, with these airlines or, who are getting laid off or people from Walt Disney who were getting laid off because those are the people who have uh, who have lobbyists working on behalf of their industry. But you were affecting more people than that. More people were listening to what was going on and watching what was going on, worrying about their ability to pay their rent that was due yesterday that they can't afford. Worried about the fact that Yo, like they, they, they have no food. 
worried about the fact that they can't pay for medications or maybe they've lost their health care because they don't have their job and they couldn't afford co like more people are are being affected by this and and we can't afford to do this back and forth now i will tell you <clears throat> while i do recognize that Nancy Pelosi is catching a lot of slack. And I understand I'm kind of moving away from jobs here, but I, I do want to, to, to talk about this for just a second. I promise I'm only going to dwell here for just a minute. While I do recognize that a lot of people felt like yesterday specifically, Speaker Pelosi, if that, if your if the, the counter proposal was based upon your original proposal. Why didn't you just accept that $1.62 trillion bill? The question was asked, isn't something better than nothing? That question, mind you, is always being asked with her, but we're never seeing its equivalent being asked to the other side. Never, ever, 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 ever. But let me tell you something. Something about negotiations, okay? I am no master negotiator by any means, but I will tell you this that I do know a little something, something about negotiating, right? And what I do know is that the person, the party that is willing to walk away has the most power. And as much as we want to sit and we want to make this a kumbaya moment and say, oh, this is just about the people, we're dealing with the political issue here. Uh, uh, we're dealing with something that has to do with politics. So it's, it's heavily coded in, in politics. And I don't mean just the politics of Nancy being able to keep her job. I mean the politics of the party, the politics of ideology, the politics of values. So anyone who tells you that this isn't, this is just, I heard the quote yesterday, oh, this isn't about values. This is about the, the top line dollar. Well, the top do line dollar are directly related to your values, sir. I'm not going to say who said it, but sir, like, <laughs> you know, but anywho, so when it, when it comes to negotiating, clearly, again, the person who was willing to walk away has the most power. I'll never forget, I was negotiating the price of a car and was sitting at the table and, you know, um, I, I, I knew that, you know, when you go in there, if you really like the car, you don't go in there showing that you really like the car. You give away your power, right? They, you're going to be able to come back. And this was when you actually could like negotiate, you know, the price of a car. Nowadays, you know, you, you really don't have too much leeway. Um, and, and again, when you're like dealing with cash, you have the ability, right? So um, like long story short, I got up. And I walked out the dealership, you know, thank you for your time. You know, this, this, this deal just doesn't work for me. Thank you for your time. You know, I, pre I appreciate your time. Got up, went to the car, started the car. Sales guy comes running out, willing to meet my demands. Or not my demands. That sounds horrible, right? I, I would never demand. Willing to meet my requests. I was willing to walk away. That is how I got what I wanted. Now, does that mean you will always get what you want? No. That's why you need to have a plan B, right? My plan B was go to a different dealership. Like this is not the only dealership in town. Um, <clears throat> now, and then especially, you know, when you're talking cash, you, again, you have more leverage than you do when you were like, yo, I got to be financed. You know, I need someone else's money to do what I want to do. But anyway, um, so the related to Speaker Pelosi, it's very, very evident that she is the person, regardless of what you want to say, when you look at the optics of what is going on, the fact that she has been unwilling to just settle, she has the power, okay? But I, I don't want to make this just a power trip. I mean, truth be told, as I talked about in previous episodes, when it comes to Speaker Pelosi, I think she is very well aware of kind of the analogy that I used about a burning house. One person wants to use a water hose and another person wants to take a single bucket of water and put water on the fire. Both parties can say, well, yeah, I've put water on the fire, but one party is going to be able to extinguish the fire, especially if it's massive, or they will at least have an increased likelihood of extinguishing that fire compared to the other party that just wants to put the bucket of the single bucket of water on a raging fire. 
when you know i just i i can't i can't i can't look pelosi and treasurer uh treasury secretary steve mnuchin they they didn't come up with a deal like i will tell you i am not in the camp of blaming nancy pelosi i think quite frankly a lot of people who are not understanding what's going on don't under truly understand negotiations. Now, again, does this mean that we are absolutely going to see something just because she's holding out? No. But I think that she is taking calculated measures, calculated risks, not even necessarily through her own train of thought. I'm 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 very, very sure that she along she she, in addition to other people, are working together to to analyze the situation, to take the calculated risks. And quite frankly, I think that she is doing what she needs to do. I said in the very, very, very beginning when all of this got started that Nancy Pelosi needs to hold out. This was something I personally said. She needs to hold out and not be willing to settle. Quite frankly, I was, I was, um, I don't want to say I was concerned, but I was, if you had asked me months ago when the conversation for a second stimulus package got started, if, if I was, uh, if, if Nancy Pelosi would have been more likely to just accept anything for the sake of accepting something, quite frankly, I would have said yes. Not necessarily attributing it to, to her personally, but typically that's how politics works. You just capitulate at some point, right? And, and that's kind of what I was expecting. I'm glad. I'm glad that Nancy Pelosi is holding out. I'm utterly glad because then let me, let me tell you what, was, what would happen. If Nancy Pelosi were to settle for a lower amount, even if it did, for instance, provide $400 of stimulus, um, like that $1.62 trillion bill ha- uh, was proposed by Steve Mnuchin that gave the $400 to the unemployed and gave $1,200 checks. Let me tell you, more likely than not, what would have happened. She would have accepted that. I can guarantee you that would not have been enough to meet the current demands of the economy. So when the data came out or when it would come out indicating that, you know, it really didn't have as much impact as we wanted for the economy, you know what would have happened then in that hypothetical situation? Then the case would be made, well, see, we helped, we provided those unemployment benefits. We provided the six, the $1,200. That didn't work. So we don't need to provide anything. That's what would happen. That is why, in my opinion, Nancy Pelosi needs to hold out. Hold out for at the very least, we know that that $600 stimulated the economy. We don't know. We don't, there's there's the devil we don't know. And the devil we don't know is if anything below $600 would stimulate the economy. You could say, well, Brittany, the LWA uh, lost wages assistance program provided $300 extra for the unemployed. Can't we use that data? Well, not really, because we have several states that haven't even gotten the $300 yet. We have a state that has declined to receive that $300. So I don't think that data is as reliable as the data that we have concerning the $600. This is why you, if you need personal stimulus in your life, you need to be willing to hold out for a better deal. Because when if we settle for a lesser deal, I'm guaranteeing you what will happen is the case will be made that, see, we don't need to help the American people anymore. Not just even in this current situation, but if there ever, God forbid, comes another situation where an emergency and enormous assistance is needed for our economy, the case will be made pointing back to 2020 saying, we don't need to consider, that's a waste of money trying to help those people. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't do it. You even have Gregory Daco. He's the chief, the chief U.S. economist at Oxford Economics. He says that what is going on does not bode well for the economy. Not He wasn't talking about the stimulus or anything like that. He was talking specifically about what's going on with jobs. It's sad, but it's telling that we had to wait for certain companies, certain industries to start going bad before politicians gave a damn. That's that's sad if you ask me.
Are you on Facebook? We're on Facebook. Check out our Facebook page in the description box of this episode. We have our blog posts. We share our latest episodes. We share relevant information related to COVID-19 economic stimulus and relief. Again, we do it all on our Facebook page. Check it out in the description box of this episode. See you there. Related to President Trump and the First Lady having uh, COVID-19 being tested positive or having those positive tests for COVID-19, um, I'm not going to make this a long segment. I really only want to mention one thing. Um, I want to examine any implications, any impact that we are seeing as a result of that positive test from the president. Uh, we are seeing uh, impact of him testing positive, of the president testing positive for COVID-19. Um, he announced his positive test early this morning. For me, it was, I think it was like around like one o'clock in the morning or so, one, one thirty. Um, and we have seen not just the, the markets here in the United States, they are open. Matter of fact, let me log into my trading account. Um, I have not, um, I haven't taken a look. Let me see here. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to get into, you know, again, I sold, I like went full on liquid. Um, okay. So Yeah. Actively, I'm telling you, I'm looking right now at the, at the market, and um, we are seeing some declines that are that are pretty sizable. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> everything here is 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 pretty down. So, and and I just want to tell you that globally, we are seeing markets not not looking too well this morning. So, um, if you were wondering if the president having COVID nineteen has any implications, um, I will tell you right off the bat for the market, the the implications can already be seen. Um, related to, I've seen some people online ask about the impact that this is going to have on for instance, presidential debates, yada, yada, yada. I'm not really going to get into that. I will say that I think that the overall expectation is that we will not see any more debates this year. I would hope to God that we're not going to see him out there campaigning, but who knows at this point. Um, I, I, I will say also that related to the stimulus talks, I do think that there is going to be impact. I'm not quite sure, however, what that impact will be. And I don't want to speculate at this time. So I just kind of want to get my tentacles out there and kind of do some feeling uh, over the weekend and see if I can kind of pick up anything. And hopefully I can come back on Monday and talk about the impact of the president being positive for COVID uh, and what it will do to the stimulus talks, if it will do anything at all. But again, I'm very, very certain that there will be some sort of impact uh, on COVID-19 discussions and negotiations. So that's just my, my deal, my thoughts on that. We're living in this reality where politicians have not been able to come to an agreement that will lead us to a new stimulus package. Um, you have companies that, again, cannot meet payroll. They cannot operate without more funding from the government. Um, but this is not the case just for companies. This is the case for a lot of American people. They can't live their lives when they are their, their personal economies have been completely decimated. They have been just shaken to shambles, right? Uh, and people need help. People really need help. Uh, you'll hear out there from so many people that you need to vote. You absolutely do need to vote because um, as much as some people would like to say, oh, well, this is a, you know, 
they're both bad and they're both i mean the devil is in the details but at the same time the devil is more in some details than he is in others and uh quite frankly some people are more willing to help you than others and uh, in the words of the president it is what it is right and being that it is what it is um look again get out there and vote people are absolutely right in telling you to get out there and vote but i want you to understand that voting in and of itself is not enough it's not enough to hold these people accountable who are unwilling to help you who were unwilling to see that you cannot pay your bills who were unwilling to see that you have been laid off because of a pandemic who were unwilling to see that you have lost your health insurance due to the fact that you've lost your job due to the pandemic there are people who need to be held accountable for their actions and how they've been handling the pandemic has been completely completely unacceptable this is where you have to do more than vote if i mentioned before that we are a political organization we're a super PAC and we want to make politicians uh who were unwilling to compromise and unwilling to move in the direction of compromise we want to hold those people accountable we want to make sure that if they don't want to help ensure that you have a job that they don't have a job consider partnering with us in making sure that these politicians are held accountable making sure that they are uh in a position where they have to represent the american people and not just their donor class what we want to do is we want to run political ads against politicians politicians specifically that again are unwilling to assist in providing uh aid to the american people we want to make sure that they are not assisted in keeping their jobs they don't deserve to they don't understand who they are working for so if you can consider partnering with us by making a contribution you can find the link in the description box below any amount that you can assist with helps we pool our resources together hence our name our united resource pack we hence we we pull together our resources so that way we can run political ads that show people that hey while your politician is telling you that they are working for you they're not so this is how even though you live in for instance uh one state you can use your funds to help take down a politician somewhere else Okay, in the words of the president, it is what it is. So, if you can assist, if you can help us run those ads again, anything you can do can help. Look in the description box below in advance. Thank you so much because we cannot run our ads without you. Hey, this is Brittany. Just wanted to shoot you a quick reminder. Look in the description box of this episode and you can find a link to our website. On our website, you can find our latest blog posts, you can find our contact information. If you even want to make a contribution, you can go over there and do that as well. You can find out the policies we are looking at and targeting as an organization. You know, I say all the time that we are a tax exempt political organization. If you want to know more about that, again, go on over to our website our-pack.com where you can find out everything you want to know, you can do everything you want to do. We will gladly, gladly, gladly welcome you on our website with open arms. Again, check out our website in the description box below. All right, guys. So this is our episode for the first uh our first official episode i can't call it the first day it technically is the second day right this is our first episode for the month of october it's already starting off to be a pretty like ugh, month right um but in the words of the president uh now i think it's still as phrased it is what it is um so yeah i i i can't even begin to think about what the remaining episodes in this month are going to bring uh as we draw closer and closer to the election so um obviously the the president made my case uh when i tell you to wear your hazmat suit hey look at the president look at the fact that our 
president, our commander in chief has COVID-19, that means that this, this, this virus out here doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care whether you think it's real or not. It doesn't care if you think it's just another cold, like if, if, if you don't take it seriously, it can get you. Let this be a warning. It doesn't matter if you are a CEO, a janitor, uh, it doesn't matter who you are, a billionaire, a trillion, like, it does not matter, right? So again, wear your hazmat suit, please, 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 please. Uh, it's super duper important. Um, it sucks that we're in a position that more layoffs are expected, Um I said last week that if 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 this package that we were getting from Nancy Pelosi did not go anywhere, that more likely than not, we would not see any form of stimulus passed before the election. Um, in addition to the fact that we didn't see it passed, um, the fact that we now have a president that has COVID-19, again, I'm not sure the exact implications that are going to come from this, uh, come from him having COVID-19 and what it's going to do to our chance of getting a stimulus. But I can say that if I had to be a betting woman, I am like 99% positive that you can forget seeing a stimulus be passed before the election. Um, related to if we'll see one after the election, that just depends uh, on what what our Congress looks like and who the president is. Uh, I think that I, I mentioned before that if Donald Trump remains the president, I do not think that we will see any meaningful stimulus. We might see some that um, just is meant to kind of uh, give the illusion of, of help. Um, but I don't think that we will see what most people are looking for in terms of that $1,200 check, those extended unemployment benefits. At this point, I'm going to be very, very frank with you. As I close the show, the best, the best hope of us getting any form of stimulus is assuming that Joe Biden becomes our next president of the United States. Uh, and it also assumes that, um, the Democrats retain the House, which I'm not concerned about at all. There's talks of them picking up more seats, which I think is very, very possible. But don't think we need to hurry, worry about what's going on over there. But we do need to hope and pray that the Democrats can take the Senate. Uh, if we see all three, if we see a Democratic president uh, a, 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 and Democrat run House and Senate, I think we will very well see not just a, a stimulus for the sake of seeing one, I think we will see a robust stimulus package, um, despite the opposition that will come from the remaining Republicans in Congress, I do think we will still see something very, very strong, something more along the lines of what people are looking to see, those uh, heavily furnished extended unemployment benefits that we see have done wonders for the economy that actually did what they were supposed to do, unlike the PPP. Uh, we will see continuation of the PPP. We will see uh, $1,200 checks. We will see that, and, and it will be no problem. If there is a situation where we see the, uh, uh, if we do see the, the Democrats take the presidency and they retain the House, but we don't see them in the Senate, if this, the Republicans retain the Senate, I do think we will still see a, a stimulus package. It just will not be as robust, as big, as grandiose as what we would get from a trifecta uh, uh, that is a, uh, a, a trifecta um, uh, Democrat run government. So um, I just kind of threw that out there on my ending. So um, yeah, it again, in the words of the president, it is what it is. I hate to kind of break this to you and kind of shamble your hopes, but I'm, I'm pretty positive. Um, if I, if we ended up getting a stimulus at this point um, before the election, I'm, I like, like I'd really be surprised. So uh, just kind of know this month, We'll, we'll still be doing some talking and reporting, but just don't expect me to get on here and say stimulus passed because it, it probably won't happen this month. So wear your hazmat suit. This is the end of the show. Um, stay safe, stay alive. Um, stay away from anyone who has confirmed COVID. That's all I can say, right? And take it seriously. This is not a hoax. This is not 
a, a cold. Uh, we're headed into flu season. I will say that personally, I am planning to bunker down. Um, I have not really been out amongst the public really in months. <laughs> like, like I, I mean, obviously I've been out the house, but like I've been to a restaurant probably once in the past few months. Um, and it, that was actually, it was actually pretty recently, the first day of fall. I said, you know what? I know I'm not going to be going into a restaurant for like until like probably April. So let me go one last time. I went to IHOP and I was like, okay, look, let me enjoy some pancakes one last time. Right. Um, did that. I don't go shopping in stores. Like I order stuff in, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like going to the extreme. Some people think I'm nuts, but I'm, I'm taking this seriously. You know, don't just look at me and listen to me. Look at what's happening with the president. You have to take this seriously because this thing, if it gets you, if you have certain comorbidities, you can be a goner. You can absolutely be a goner. And, and, and I don't know you, but I think you have quite a bit to live for. So, and if you aren't concerned about getting it because you want to be a goner, I, I really think that you need to get some, some help. Not, I'm not saying that in a demeaning way, but you know, you do have reasons to live. You shouldn't be trying to kill yourself or others, um, by means of contracting the virus. So anywho, have a good day. Wear your hazmat suit. Um, first time I've kind of closed in that way. Typically my closures from podcast are a bit more cut and dry. So Apologies from tangent. Hopefully it didn't kind of catch you off guard too much. I almost feel like I did another segment, but just kind of had some things that I needed to say at this very troubling time because we're in a very troubling spot and all of us need to brace ourselves because, because we're in, we're in really deep and uh, we're needing to brace for impact. Have a good one guys.